Hey, man, 2020 was rough, hella rough. But 2021 is here, and it's time to upgrade your studio. <laughs> What's up, YouTube? Welcome back to the channel. I'm Wavy Wayne from wavywayne.com. If this is your first time here, go ahead and hit that subscribe button because this channel is all about giving you free game on recording, mixing, and producing. So if you're into that, hit that subscribe button and hit that notification button so you can be on top of it all, all right? So today, I'm bringing y'all a dope little video, man. It's actually uh, inspired by a article that I found on soundonsound.com. Now, if you're not familiar with Sound on Sound, it's just a dope resource for us engineers and mixers to just learn all kind of stuff and learn about new gear, new techniques. It's our periodical, man. Instead of getting the Wall Street Journal, I read the Sound on Sound, all right? You can go to soundonsound.com and actually check out there um, this whole article for yourself. So I found an article that said 21 ways to improve your studio in 2021. So I thought I'd talk about all 21 of these ways with y'all and give y'all my kind of spin on it, man, because I know y'all don't like to read. <laughs> <laughs> so let's take a look at the article, man. 21 ways to improve your studio in 2021. One of the first ways and one of the most important things I think is to actually improve your acoustics. Not only will improving your acoustics help out with your recording, but it will also help out with your monitoring as you are mixes. So your recordings are gonna get better. Your mixes are gonna get better. If you started out your home studio or project studio with kind of basic um, Aurelex foam or whatever um, on the walls, it may be time to look a little bit deeper into acoustic treatment and find out some ways that um, you can enhance that. I actually have a video coming up to show you how I build my custom panels that I have in my studio. And it's definitely something that you guys should check out. So that video will be out very, very soon. I ordered it from GIK Acoustics, a little kit that's super easy, man. And yeah, it's actually gonna be delivered later this week. So sometime soon, and that video will be up and I'll be showing y'all how I like to build my custom studio panels. Another tip uh, for upgrading your studio in 2021 would be to upgrade your monitoring. Man, I know that that's a huge one. When we start out, um, we, we just grab whatever monitors we can, whatever monitors we can afford, right? We think about, okay, I got three or 400 bucks. What monitors can I get? Well, <laughs> I got a couple monitors that I would definitely recommend as your upgrades. One my beloved Atom A7Xs that's sitting right behind me. I've been rocking with those now for probably about a year and they've changed my game, man. Really elevated my game. And uh, before that, I was rocking with the um, Yamaha HS5s. Uh, I had the HS8s and a few other different monitors, but none of them compared to the Atom A7Xs. And now I have a new pair of monitors that are also one of my brand new favorites. And those are the Cali Audio IN8s, man. Cali Audio has some really dope, affordable monitors that are still actually very, very high quality. So check both of those brands out. And yeah, man, upgrade your studio monitors ASAPery for the new year. Along with just upgrading your monitors, man, if you only have one set of studio monitors, it's probably gonna be crucial for you to have a secondary reference. So as, as you see, I actually have both of these behind me. I got my A7Xs and also the Cali Audio IN8s. Both of them are amazing, but right over to my side that you can't see, I'm also using a Sony uh, boombox, which I think is a great reference uh, speaker that you can uh, use in your studio. It's like the best $100 that you can spend. I say that all the time. I always got the link down in the description below. Um, but yes, that Sony boombox in, in conjunction with whatever other monitors that you have, having two sets of monitors is gonna help to elevate your game and give you another perspective on your mixes. So next up on the list is gonna be to upgrade either your mixer or get you a patch bay, man. I actually invested recently in the Flock Audio patch um, and that is gonna change the game. I'm integrating a whole bunch of new analog gear into my workflow for the new year and the Flock Audio patch um, is the centerpiece of that. It's what's gonna actually allow me to route all of my analog signals without fussing around with patch cables. It's a digitally controlled analog patch bay where I can control and change all of my patch points right here through my computer um, using my mouse, man, and the software that they provide. So look into that, man. If you are integrating analog with your digital, which you definitely should do, 
Check out the Flock Audio Patch. I think it's a super dope addition to the studio for the new year and going forward in the future. Um, just thinking about today and beyond, man. Getting away from patch cables and all that stuff is a huge relief for me. Go portable, man. <laughs> Right here behind me, I have a Zoom H4n. This is my little portable handy recorder. Now, sometimes this is just great to t pack and go um, anywhere you want to. Let's say if I was recording a podcast or if I wanted to grab some sound on location, instead of having to fuss with a bunch of microphones and cables and computers and interfaces, just having this handy portable recorder is super duper useful for me. I, I found so many uses for this. Um, yeah, man, it's really great for location recording with podcasts and it also has built-in stereo mics right at the top so if i need to just record anything quick do some sound design having a handy portable recorder like this is uh i mean it's it's uh what do you say what do you call that um um priceless <laughs> One of the next things that you can do to actually um, upgrade your studio for 2021 is to get another microphone. I know a lot of you guys out there just have that one vocal microphone that you got and it may be time to add another flavor. Just think about how many Jordans you got in your closet, all right? You, let's start there. If you got more than one pair of Jordans, then yes, you need more than one microphone. You can never have too many microphones. Microphones are our instruments that we use as um, engineers, man. And when you want a specific sound for a specific uh, source that you may be recording, having different microphones at your disposal is gonna be key to getting the sound that you actually want. So get a different microphone, upgrade your microphones, and start to build your mic collection. So number seven on this list from Sound On Sound says to get hands on with a hardware synth. Now, if you are a producer, I would totally agree with that. Sometimes just rocking in the box so much with MIDI and all these virtual instruments can seem a little stiff and get a little stale, man. And honestly, it's nothing like a good warm analog synth. It's nothing like turning knobs and pushing buttons to find the sound that you want. Now, the downside of using analog synths is that, hey, there may not be a pre preset on there, but you get to create the sounds that you want, man. So think about that. Maybe if you're a producer, jump into the market and the secondhand market for those are really great because they can get a little pricey, but people are selling this gear all the time everywhere. So adding an analog synth to your studio setup would be a great idea. Looking good, feeling good. I like that, man. You know, your boy Wavy always like to stay looking good. So maybe adding some nice lighting to your studio and thinking about the type of chair that you have, you know, um, the studio furniture. Because when a client walks in or even when you walk in, it's a place that you have to be every day. You want it to feel like a nice creative zone. You want to have that creative vibe. So definitely you want your studio to look good, be clean. So think about what type of aesthetic enhancements you can make to your studio to really liven it up. Up and make it somewhere that you're excited to be and that your clients are excited to be too. Percussion comes in at number nine on this list, and they basically are saying that you should add some percussive instruments, some real percussive instruments into your studio so that you can add a real shaker. Maybe add a, a real tambourine or a little cowbell in the studio to give a real authentic sound to some of your produced tracks instead of always just programming every single thing. Maybe even grabbing a snare if you don't have enough space for a full drum set. Maybe just have a real snare and mic that snare and give your tracks and authentic snare drum sound. So I think that's an amazing little tip. Next up on the list, it says, consider correction. Room correction is an idea that I've definitely explored before. I've used the sonar reference before, um, and I, I like what it does. I don't use it all the time now, but depending on your situation and what you need um, in your uh, environment, you may need to actually consider adding room correction. Now what this will do, um, especially with the sonar reference, what it does is, EQs the room, the, the output going through your speakers that's tailored to your room. So you get this microphone and you stand in all these different positions all over your room. I know I got a video somewhere that I actually did this and I, I'll link it somewhere, but you stand all over the room with this microphone and uh, the sonar reference gets a, a idea of what frequency response is like in your room and it corrects your speakers to tailor or counteract whatever anomalies may be happening in your room and give you a much more flatter response, which is going to be great for your mixing. All right. So definitely may want to consider a uh, room correction. 
Next on the list is getting out of the box. One way that I plan to get out of the box is through my Neve 8816 summing mixer. So I'm gonna be routing all my signals through that summing mixer as I'm mixing and also hitting it through a bunch of other um, hardware gear, man. Analog gear infused with the digital. It's just the perfect marriage for me. And going forward in the new year, I'm really excited about that new integration. Um, other ways that you can get out of box is maybe using an MPC to program some stuff or like we were saying earlier using the actual analog synths and um, recording live guitars and instrumentations versus just programming everything directly inside of your DAW. All right. Number 12 on the list. I don't think we need no help with this because every time I turn around, y'all always got something new or that y'all telling me about and got me spending my money, but trying new plugins, man. Simple enough, try some new stuff. If you've been working with a group of plugins uh, thus far, Explore outside of that realm. You can never have too many options. Um, you, you may just want a different flavor one day, man. You may want the Waves uh, uh, 1176 or the UAD 1176 or the Plugin Alliance 1176, you might want all of them, right? They all might have a different little flavor. So you can never have too many plugins, I believe, but <laughs> maybe you can. My wife might think otherwise. <laughs> Online collaboration is a great way that we can stay um, in contact with each other, especially with all this COVID stuff that's happening. It's not allowing us to get in the studio and actually work together. So think about some of the resources that we have for online collaboration, like maybe using a Zoom call to collaborate as a songwriters, or even um, working with someone virtually through Avid Cloud. And you guys could be working in the same session at the same time, adding different stuff to it. Um, there's some great new features coming and I'm excited about the future of of um, collaborative software, especially kind of built into our DAWs like um, Pro Tools has done with the Avid Cloud. Invest in your input chain. Man, I can't say that enough. I got a whole rack of gear over here. My LA-2A Distressor, Focusrite ISA. That is my vocal chain that I like to go through all the time and I'm adding even more to that because my input chain is so crucial to getting the sound that I want um, before I even record anything and, and saves me a lot of time even processing um, in the DAW. So mixes just come out better when you are actually recording in the sound that you want. So invest in your input chain and not only that invest in yourself boy if you're watching this video then you already do that if you're a subscriber to my channel then i know that you are out here seeking knowledge and there's nothing more than that but maybe take a course maybe sign up for a class maybe buy a book maybe keep watching even more videos and and talk to people get a mentor there's so many different ways that you can invest in yourself spend time you got to put your 10,000 hours in put that time in to increase your skills especially if you have some time off around the holidays and stuff like that Spend that time locked into the studio getting better at what you do. Fix those dodgy cables, man. <laughs> if you got some old crappy cables that you just got in a corner somewhere in the studio, I know we all got them, the ones with the tape on it and the ones that we just don't use and don't talk about, right? The ones we pull out when we, when we have to and hope that they work. Yeah, those. <laughs> Maybe you can learn how to actually solder those cables and fix them up yourself. That would be a great little way to not only give yourself another the skill and make you more valuable but save money on always buying replacement cables and honestly you know when you build your own cables they tend to last a whole lot longer next up you can integrate guitar pedals into your mix setup um yeah man if you got guitar pedals if you're a guitarist why not use some of those effects man guitar pedals have great effects and it's pretty easy to set them up um for, through your interface and route them back into your uh daw for mixing so definitely try that out if you have those on hand and if not go buy one now, you can find them for all types of prices all types of different effects from uh, wires and distortion and all kind of stuff man so maybe integrating guitar pedals into your mixes may be something cool to do the next recommendation on this list is to upgrade your headphones. Man, and I'm excited about this one because coming this year, your boy Wavy actually has something special right here in this bag. And, and if you watch this video up to this point, 
I'm excited to share this with you because I ain't really talked about it before. You might have saw me um, rocking these in a, a couple videos, but I've been working on developing my own brand of headphones. I had to make sure it's right in the quality that I wanted. I'm working with a company that is right here based in my hometown. So the quality control is crazy. This ain't just nothing that we slapped together. I'm gonna give y'all a sneak peek. These are gonna be available in limited edition coming soon. So if you're interested in these headphones, the dope thing about them is that they are actually passive um, isolating headphones. Super great for recording and mixing. And yes, they come with that nice little swag bag that you saw me pull out of them. Um, but wow, these headphones are great. Whether you are recording or mixing, they offer up to about 30 dB of attenuation passively. Um, so you won't have to worry about headphone bleed while you are recording. And that is gonna be great to keeping your signals clean. So let's take a look at those headphones real quick, B. Let me see, hopefully, let me get, get myself out of here. The Wavy One isolating headphone is coming soon in limited edition, limited quality. quantity. So when these hit the market, um, I, I really hope y'all support this and get your hands on it. Um, these have been in development all um, 2020, and I'm excited to actually bring this product to the market. I'm super excited about this. So yes, upgrade your headphones because the headphones that you're using definitely make a difference. Next up, take control of what you hear. Um, your monitor control station. Maybe you wanna upgrade your monitor control station. I personally love my PreSonus Central Station. It gives me so much control over uh, my monitors and then even calibration, man. Um, in the future, I may even do a video explaining how I calibrate my monitors to, uh, to where I want them. But basically, I calibrate my subs and my monitors to, to, to match, right? And if you have multiple pairs of monitors, it's important that they are level match. So when you switch it from one to the other, you don't hear like a huge jump in volume, okay? So um, definitely that's gonna be coming, but I'm sure you can find some resources online to help you with uh, calibrating your studio monitors, but it's super key. So the last tip is gonna be a personal from me and that's gonna be to hit subscribe right now, man. All 2021, this channel is gonna bring you a bunch of free game, a bunch of free knowledge on how to improve your recordings, improve your studio, improve your productions and your mixes, man. Also, if you are having trouble with your mixes still not being where you want them to be, visit wavywayne.com and check out my personal recorded and mixing templates. Thanks for watching this video. I'm Wavy Wayne, be dope.